Hey everyone, so in this video uh, I'm going to be demonstrating how to contain your camera in a specific boundary, such as keeping your camera in a tiled map uh, view. So like if, if your camera is moving around, it won't leave outside the edges of the tiled map level. Uh, to kind of give a demonstration real quick as to what I mean by that, I found a project that I had lying around with that's using a tiled map and uh, you'll notice how this is the edge of the map and there's just a continuous blue sky and everything and that's kind of abnormal. It, it loses the immersion that your players contain in this uh, 2D physical level um, and just to mention we are using Box2D in this one too uh, but that's besides the point. Um, so this video is kind of a, rec or a uh, request by a user uh, named Taylor Amy. Um, so Taylor, good point on bringing this back up. I actually, uh, if I remember correctly, I was going to be doing this video, but I just kind of forgot about it. Um, so I'm sure this one will help a lot of users. Uh, so along with Taylor's request, uh, they were wondering how to also do other camera styles while doing, uh, you know, the boundary. So we'll get into that. Uh, it's really easy to just chain these camera controls uh, into our game. So first things first, though, we're going to implement the bounding box, and it'll kind of go hand in hand with uh, using multiple camera styles. So uh, don't mind all this code. It's, it's kind of messy. I apologize. It's an old project that I just kind of threw together a long time ago. Um, we're going to jump into our camera styles class and we're going to create another public static method uh, that it returns nothing and we're just going to call this boundary. And so we're going to take a camera in and int x, int y, and, and you know what, I'm actually going to call those start x, start y, just because that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, int and x, int, and y. Okay, so what these four variables are going to be used for, and you know what, they actually should all be floats as well, sorry about that. Um, what these variables kind of mean for what we're going to be doing is uh, because we have all four of them, we'll be able to contain our camera in any specific boundary we want. So it kind of makes it a little bit more powerful to use. Um, and we can use it for more than just an entire tiled map. We could use it for certain rooms in a tiled map, like let's say a character is locked to a certain room, and you'll be able to determine, or at least tell the camera to not move outside of that room so it doesn't break that immersion again. So uh, to jump right in, we have our standard uh, ref, like making a reference to our camera's position and that is a vector three, by the way. And uh, now we wanna do our restrictive tests, or our restricted uh, checks. So that is if position.x is less than the start x, so this is our leftmost boundary. If uh, the camera position is less than our less leftmost boundary, then position.x equals, equals our leftmost boundary. So, uh, it's very straightforward, uh, pretty easy to understand, I'm sure. Uh, position dot y equals start y. So if it goes beyond it, just set it back to where that boundary is, and it'll just look like it's locked to it if it goes too far. And that's kind of what we're going for. So the rightmost and topmost boundaries are a little bit different. Um, so you have if position dot x is greater than the start x, plus the end x, and this is uh, compensating for wherever we're starting and uh, wherever we're ending. So this is like a width. The end x is kind of like a width. Um, it won't be an absolute. You know what, this should actually be, uh, let's make these width and height. That makes, I wonder if that makes a little bit more sense. If not, uh, just kind of tell me, I mean, you can, name them whatever you want, they're just variable names. Um, so if uh, the position is greater than the rightmost boundary, then we want to set it just like we did with the leftmost to that rightmost boundary. 
Same goes for the topmost boundary. Uh, position.y is greater than start y plus height. Position.y equals start y plus height. Okay, and then uh, now that we've done all the modifications, we only have a left top, bottom, and right boundary. Uh, that's the entire rectangle. We're good. Uh, we can move on and update our camera position. So set that camera position to the modified position vector and then camera dot update. Always good to call that after you've done any camera position changes. So let's move back here. Uh, you'll see already then our update method, we have this camera styles dot alert to target. And we send it the camera and the player position and we scale by the PPM. Uh, apologies in advance, like I said, this code is a little uh, old and this should be using the PPM constant but uh, it's just set to 32 because that's the size of the tiles it's using, which would be my one meter uh, PPM pixels per meter constant. Uh, so just to kind of get a refresher of what lerp to target does, as we saw uh, when I was playing with the cat in the, in the game, jumping around a little bit, um, it just does our lerp equation, very, very simple linear interpolation on the cat. Um, and to get our boundary going, uh, what we want to do is get our int start x equals camera dot viewport width. We're going to divide that by two, int, or I'm sorry, that should be float, and then float start y equals camera dot viewport height divide by two. And uh, this is going to compensate for, like, because the camera position is centered in the screen, um, you need to take care of getting that extra leftmost bit and the extra bottommost bit of uh, space. So zero, zero, just saying zero, zero wouldn't be correct because it would put zero, zero in the center of the screen. And that is where your boundary would be. And so you'd still be able to see outside of your level. So that's why we're doing, uh, we're getting the viewport height and viewport width and we're dividing it by two because we, uh, you'll you'll see the outcome of that. So now that we've done that, we can call our camera styles dot boundary, pass it our camera, give it our start x and our start y, and then we're also uh, I have these extra variables up here, level width, level height that I get from the tiled map. And how you get that is uh, you load your tiled map and uh, your map renderer. And then you can use a map properties object, and you get that from the map.get properties. And there's two attributes in there that tell you how many tiles wide, tiles, keep that in mind, uh, and how many tiles uh, tall the map is. So uh, knowing that it only returns how many tiles and not the actual pixel uh, height and width, we need to kind of do the modification of that on our own. So we're going to be doing level width times 32. So this is tiles times 32 because 32 is our tile height. And um, I definitely don't recommend hard coding that. It's definitely better to get it out of the, of the props, uh, the map properties uh, for tile width and tile height. Um, and so continue on from there. You want to subtract the start x times two because the start x is going to be starting um, half the viewport width in, that adds more to our rightmost if we just did level width times 32. So we need to subtract uh, the extra amount we added on the rightmost end. And the same, we'll have to do the same for the top. So uh, level height times the tile uh, height minus start y times two. Okay, and now if we run it, you'll notice that because we're still calling lerp to target, uh, the camera's still gonna lerp to the player, and uh, we also call the boundary after we've lerped, so things will look pretty smooth. Um, hopefully this will be the right outcome once I run it here. So okay, so we have our cat, and we move all the way to the left, and look at that, we have our bounding box, that is great. Uh, it's not going out of the level, and you can really feel a better sense of containment uh, with our character, and it really adds to the immersion of the level. So, um, let's see, let's uh, 
press that key to go to zero zero. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So yeah, you can definitely see now that things are working as expected. It's not going more, it's not going less. Um, it's actually right on spot with what we we're going for. So also because we're basing it off of the camera width and camera height, it will also take into account for any kind of uh, screen changes. So it won't mess it up if you resize the screen or anything. It's still keeping that 32 uh, distance there and uh, maintaining the boundary that we are looking for. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it's nice to be back in the swing of things again, and I'll see you guys next time for one of our AI videos that should be coming along.